I'm Hilary Cotter, the manager of the Edinburgh Genome Foundry. In 2012, we were very fortunate that the UK government decided synthetic biology was one of the great eight technologies to invest in. Followed, following this, six re synthetic, uh, synthetic centers for synthetic biology were formed in the UK, one of which, was, is, which is led by Susan Rosser in Edinburgh, the mammalian the Center for Mammalian Synthetic Biology. They also recognized that um, to be internationally compatible, the research cent the synthetic sense biology centers will need the technological platforms to keep competing. And another 18 million pounds was made available by the research councils, and Patrick Kai and Susan Rosser were successful in three grants to get six million pounds for the ed to found the Edinburgh Genome Foundry. Also three other foundries were formed in the UK, of one of which you will hear a bit more later. We are embedded in an excellent scientific environment in Edinburgh with the center and also the Wellcome Trust Center for Cell Biology. Many labs are performing synthetic biology like synthetic chromosomes, synthetic transcription factors and much more. However, we have an automated system that I'll tell you a bit more about that would be capable for more. So the GP write program sounds very interesting to us. As far as I know, our platform is the largest integrated platform for synthetic biology. The setup is highly modular and it consists of cutting edge technology that is future proof because the technology will develop very quickly and we can just replace and modulate the system. I just quickly run you through the current system. It is integrated by Thermo and on a big linear uh, L-shaped platform. It is run by three industrial sized robot arms that move on a linear rail and on the platform you see outlined all the equipment that you need for DNA assembly. For example, we have various liquid handling robots on there, two Tikan Evo 200s, and the Certis bulk dispenser for very fast dispensing of liquids and an acoustic dispenser from lab, lab site for very small volume transferals. We have a fleet of T-robots and uh, uh, light cyclos on the setup for reactions and a customized colony picker and um, spreader. Also various incubators at adjustable uh, changeable temperatures for reagents or cultures, yeast or bacteria. We also have centrifuges on the system, plate sealers to seal the plates. All reactions are, trans uh, are performed in SPS plate format that can be handled by them and the plates need to be sealed. There's also a peeler to peel the seal off for further processing. Then we have various delitters on there, as some plates don't have seals, for example, the agar plates for the colonies. And we have a capper decapper as we freeze all our parts and assembly constructs in glycerol stocks in these fluidex tubes. Then we have an input hotel that allows us to access the system during robotic runs. All plates are barcoded and tracked during the process, and therefore we have a barcode labeler and several barcode readers there. We also have several large carousels to store all consumables and reagents needed for the runs. Our product catalog will consist of all assembly technologies of interest. At the moment, we're using restriction type 2S assemblies, but we are very happy to expand on others. We also will make er several variations of genetic constructs and also phenotypic assaying. At the moment, this is limited to high throughput microfermentation and metabolomics, but this is very likely to extend a lot in the future. In the downtime, when the equipment is not needed for assembly techno techniques, we also offer molecular, automated molecular biology processes for the individual labs. Jeff asked us to um, point out some bottlenecks in the system from one particular workflow, so I chose the restriction type 2S workflow, which you see here in pictures and text and how it is on our platform. The liquid handling is, um, will not be a bottleneck. There is plenty of time uh, that we can assemble no end. However, the two overnight incubations of bacterial colonies or others um, is a very 
puts a time constraint on the system and also the data analysis, but we can discuss this more in detail later. When we talk about the fully automated system, we don't just mean the DNA assembly by the robots on the platform, we also mean the software integration to avoid human error and intervention. So for this, our software team is developing several software packages that interact between the platform, which is run by Thermos Software Momentum, and the sample database, the operators, and the design tools. The first one is DNA Chisel. This is a sequence optimizer. So if you want to develop a very, uh, assemble a very large sequence, you can just submit it to the software and put constraints, constraints and objectives on. The software then try addresses these and solves them and optimizes the sequence. Another software package is Screepy, which screens the submitted sequence for pathogenicity. And this follows the rules from the International Gene uh, uh, Synthesis Consortium, of which we were the first academic member. DNA Cauldron um, allows, uh, simulates the assembly. So you just enter all the parts you want to assemble. The DNA Cauldron simulates it and, out and checks if other assemblies are possible or not. And as a bonus, you get the final sequence of the assembled DNA as a sequence file. DNA Weaver uh, is you as put in your big sequence you want to assemble and it immediately compares it to our database and sees if we have parts for it already that, we can, that can be reused or it checks which assembly methods would be most um, suitable to assemble this DNA and also um, compares different DNA synthesis providers for price and feasibility to make parts. Plato is um, a software that takes the output from several machines on the, on the platform and um, deals with these so that the operator or the liquid handling robots have um, instructions for the next round of assembly. Let's say an assembly failed or um, needs to be repeated. Bandwidth is a software that um, you enter your DNA assemblies to that you want to make and it um, runs through all possible restriction enzyme digests and gives you a prediction of which enzyme digest is very characteristic for that assembly. When we then perform the restriction di enzyme digest on our system and do the high throughput electrophoresis, it compares the um, predicted pattern to the one we get and tells us if this assembly is likely correct or not. We release our software in GitHub. It's open source and we progressively um, submit it there. So please feel free to look it up or contact us um, uh, if you want more details. So at the Edinburgh Genome Foundry, we are looking to automate the full cycle of synthetic biology. We worked with Autodesk on the development of genetics uh, constructor. Um, I mentioned the IGSC and the software and platform interaction to um, build up a fully automated system. We um, perform testing with the high throughput uh, microfermenter and the mass spec and hopefully will build up many cycles in the future. We are very keen on collaboration with other people of any background. Um, at, we have built up a very good relationship with, most of, with all of the suppliers of our equipment and are working together with them on uh, improving the automation and the integration of such a big system. Also, we work closely together with the DNA synthesis companies that make the DNA for us that we use as, starting, as a starting material. I'd really like to uh, thank the EGF team for this because without these people, this wouldn't have been possible. Any questions?
Thank you. That was a great overview. Uh, so what are your, I don't know if you've swapped out any modules yet because they've been superseded. What would be your criteria that it's time to swap out a module? If there is a newer machine that is faster, better, can do more things, most likely I think the first will be to add more things. If, for example, colony picking becomes a, a bottleneck, we would add a second colony picker. Um, or we ha so far we have only taken off equipment. <laughs> we had a plate reader on there that wasn't used, but this plate reader became very useful for another application, so we just took it off. But uh, and the next thing to add will be um, instruments for phenotypic analysis that we can immediately enter the new DNA in various organisms and do first analysis as automated that the researcher might want. Microscopes, um, plate, more plate readers, uh, um, yeah, the microfermenter project could be integrated in the long term. Hi. Hi. Uh, we're just wondering uh, to what extent have you incorporated machine vision into either the current system or potential future plans um, in terms of, you know, monitoring and real-time feedback on whether processes are going as planned and, you know, preventing derailments of various kinds? Uh, so at the moment not because our throughput is not that high that we need to run the machines 24-7. Um, I think uh, uh, quite a bit of change of lab culture is needed first. People the, just don't think enough in an automated way and what's possible with automation. So yes, at the moment not.